Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Evelyn Lucas Perry. I am the Director of Public Policy Research here at the American Dental Education Association. Thank you for your interest in this presentation titled the Exploring the Career Possibilities After Dental School. So my goal is to really give you an overview of what are the sum of the different opportunities and options for dental school graduates. So first, dental school. Many of you um, have either are in dental school or are thinking about going to dental school. And dental school, you have a lot of science courses. You're learning a lot about the different specialties within dentistry, but then you're learning about ethics, about professionalism, and you're having different milestones that you're making, such as your white coat ceremony, taking your national boards, um, seeing your first patient. So there's a lot of different opportunities within dental school, and so a lot of students, while they're in dental school, have a pretty good idea of the type of career path that they're interested in. Some of students come in with an idea idea of going into a specific specialty or maybe joining a parent or doing some type of um, a dental, uh, be, having some type of a dental career, but really while you're in dental school, that's what really gives you the insight and exposure to a lot of the career possibilities. So I want to first say, so after you've gone through dental school, of course you graduate, it's four years, um, aside from our one school, which is three years, but you have this great point mile marker which is your graduation and I want to first give a shout out to all of our recent graduates our 2016 graduates you are now doctors which is one of the awesomest titles you can have but it also has a lot of responsibility that's intertwined with that um, I've also if anyone does anyone know why I've included the this lavender color in the scheme Okay, well the reason why I've included lavender is because lavender is the color of dentistry. So when you walk across the stage, you're actually going to be um, hooded with a lavender sash. So that's our color. It's purple. Okay, so you've graduated, you've gotten pictures and hugs and tears from your mom and your grandma. And so now it's like, okay, what's next? What do we do? And so I'll go over just a brief overview about what most, um, what our dental workforce looks like pr presently. So it's a little bit different than medicine. So in medicine, most physicians are actually specialists, but in dentistry, the majority of dentists, 80% around, um, are, at, are in general dentistry and 20% are specialists. So most states, um, in order to be eligible to practice in that state, you have to have graduated from a U.S. dental school, and then you have to complete your boards, and then you have to complete a clinical portion of your boards. And then some other states also have specific requirements like doing or taking an ethics examination. So all of that is something that you can actually reach out to your state association. So I'm from Michigan, so example, I would reach out to the, I reached out to the Michigan Dental Association, and they really helped me understand what were the requirements in order to get licensed within that state. So traditionally, um, most dentists um, are in private practice, but there are different opportunities for dentists, especially related to academic dentistry, research, and then service within the federal government. So a lot of students after around actually a little over 50% actually pursue a residency program. So residency program can, it consists of either a general practice residency or an advanced education in general dentistry. So a GPR or an AEGD. So both of these are really um, help advance your skills in general dentistry. The AEGD is typically based within a dental school while a GPR has a hospital type of association or affiliation. This is the other option that students go into is doing a specialty program. So in dentistry, we have nine recognized specialties. So you have endodontics, you have oral maxillofacial pathology, oral maxillofacial radiology, oral maxillofacial surgery, orthodontics pediatric dentistry, periodontics, and prosthodontics, and then the only non-clinical specialty is dental public health. So students have the opportunity of 
of after graduating going into one of these nine specialties. Uh, typically, it's um, one of the special going into one of the specialties is two years, uh, except when you want to earn your master's, which is three years. And then for oral and maxillofacial surgery, it is four years. Um, but if you wanted to pursue a program where you're also getting your medical doctorate, your MD, then it's a six-year program. Some of them are five, but the majority of the MD programs for oral maxillofacial surgery are six years. Other students are very much interested and in go straight into private practice. Um, private practice is something where um, most students um, either have a um, have worked with someone either at a faculty member or have a family member that they can transition into but some students really just work for um, different companies and or set up their own practice themselves so what is another opportunity another opportunity that students go into is academia or academic dentistry so a lot of edu educators actually find that they ha really have a uh, get a lot back from working with students and participating with and working with colleagues that are trying to advance the dental profession, both on the research side but also on the teaching side. Um, th the benefits of teaching include you can be involved in didactic courses. Uh, so that's like maybe teaching a uh, science course or a dental anatomy course, for instance. You can be involved in the clinical floor, so that's when you're teaching students on different dental procedures, either on typodonts uh, or fake teeth or fake patients or on uh, actual patients as well. Um, patient, ca patient care, you also, as an academic dentist, uh, it's not necessarily all teaching. It does include a component of research. Sometimes that's research in a laboratory if you're interested or research uh, within the educational system, so educational research or clinical research. But then also, you, there are in most dental, most all dental schools have what's called a faculty practice. And so it's literally just a private, almost a private practice within a dental school. And so faculty members have their own patients that they, um, that they treat. One of the benefits also of being an academic dentist is that you're able to you know, write and publish in journals and explore a lot of new technologies and discoveries. Because of course, the dental education environment is where we're trying to take advantage of all the new uh, technologies and innovations so there's an opportunity to work with things like CAD CAM for instance when it first came out which might be cost prohibitive at least initially for some private practices and um, then there's also the opportunity of maybe not doing academic dentistry full-time so you do have adjunct faculty and then you also have faculty that work in the dental school maybe one or two days a week and then have their own private practice so there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to going into academia dental research so dental research is include really includes dentists that are researchers and trained to contribute and really trained to contribute to improving the overall health um, of patients, both within their scope, but then also it improves the health of, of the patients as a whole. So for instance, some dental researchers will focus on um, genetics or genomics. And so while they're also focusing on maybe identifying a certain biomarker to determine whether someone is more susceptible for a certain disease, such as periodontitis, their research does impact not only um, th what, the, what we're able to do with that technology, but it also impacts the wider, broader um, scope of research that they're doing. So it impacts ge um, genetics and it impacts obviously the health and well-being of patients if you're able to identify that. Um, so many researchers actually work in dental schools. Um, some have their own laboratories, they might teach a little bit, but a lot of times they have their own research laboratory. They receive and they apply for funding from what's called the National Institute of, of Health and they have different centers within that. The one that's dedicated to dental research is the National Institute of Dental and Cranial Facial Research, but then they can also get funding from different private companies, the National Science Foundation. There's a lot of opportunities for dental researchers. Another opportunity that's available for dental graduates is service in the federal government. 
And service in the federal government includes, you know, the, any military um, dentists that are enlisted, and they really treat the military personnel and their families. When you work for the federal government, you have the opportunity of getting scholarships. So this is something that students can pursue even before they get into dental school. So they might do four years while they're in dental school, get paid, their tuition is paid, they get a stipend. They sometimes have to do some type of training, you know, every year. Uh, but then afterwards, then they put in their four years of military service. Uh, there's also opportunity, if you didn't do that, get a scholarship with the federal government, there's an opportunity to get loan repayment. So. Um, there's a lot of military careers they include for dentists, including the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and even the Coast Guard. They all have dental positions um, and are located throughout the U.S. and then also other uh, countries. So it's a great way for students to travel and it's a great way, or sorry, not students, it's a great way for dentists to travel to not all be um, actually burdened with um, the issues of running your own private practice and then also it gives you the opportunity of serving your country. So the future is really bright. Um, I think the like I said while you're in dental school there's a lot of opportunities to learn from your own teachers, your um, other alumni and then of course if there's any of your close friends or family members that have a dental background um, it's an opportunity to learn from them. And so I always say keep an open mind. Um, just a little bit of background. Um